Hello everybody, Tegan here with High Point. Thank you so much for tuning in to tonight's episode of What is in the Night Sky this month. Tonight, I'm going to be taking you through a beautiful tour of the night sky in the month of October. As always, we're going to be visiting several deep sky objects and we're going to see what the moon and the planets are up to. So buckle in and let's see what's really out there. Tonight we're going to start off with the full moon. If you think the full moon in September is considered the harvest moon, you'd only be partially correct. The harvest moon is actually the full moon that occurs closest to the autumnal equinox. And this year, with full moons on both September 7th and October 6th, the harvest moon occurs in October. During the full moon, the moon always rises as the sun sets. So during sunset, try and get a good view of the horizon to see the moon look extra big as it rises up over the horizon. For our next stop, we're gonna remain within the realm of our solar system and we're gonna talk about the planets. Mars can be found clinging to the west-southwestern horizon this month and is joined by Mercury from mid-month onwards. Two degrees will separate them on the 18th and the 19th, with Mercury, the brighter of the two, just six degrees above the horizon, 15 minutes after sunset. Look for a thin two-day-old moon to their left on the 23rd. Now the gap between Saturn and Neptune widens from three to four degrees this month, but both remain in an excellent position for observation throughout the night. Uranus is observable from late evening, just 4.3 degrees away from Pleiades. Jupiter is closest to Pollux and Gemini from the 10th to the 15th when it passes 6 degrees south of the star. The last quarter moon appears close to Castor, Pollux, and Jupiter in the early hours of the 13th and 14th. Venus continues to lose ground against the sun but can still be seen shortly before dawn in the east with the waning crescent moon to its upper right on the 19th. Now, I mentioned briefly this month that Uranus will hang very close to the Pleiades star cluster, or Messier 45. Let's talk about this conjunction. Uranus takes about 84 years to orbit the sun. This is why we call this a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to see Uranus very close to the Pleiades star cluster. This time around, the planet and cluster will occupy the same 10 by 50 binocular field of view from mid-April 2025 to mid-August 2026, and then again between mid-October 2026 and late May of 2027. From the conjunction of Uranus and the Pleiades star cluster, we're going to head out far past the realms of our own solar system. We're going to take a look at the OWL cluster. NGC 457, a fine cluster for both small telescopes and astrophotographers. A low magnification will show Phi Cassiopeia, the double star that gives the owl its eyes. The remaining fainter stars outline the bird's body and wings, with the stars appearing densest in its chest area. So within the owl cluster, a double star system makes up the eyes. Let's move to the next object, which is also a double star. Mesarthim. Mesarthim is an easy double for almost any telescope. A magnification of 35 times will barely split Mesarthim into two white stars of almost equal brightness, with the best views coming in with a magnification of around 100 times. I always try to mention in our videos that double stars are great candidates for beginner visual astronomers. They're bright, they're typically easily visible in light polluted skies, and they help you to navigate the night sky as you learn and progress through your amateur astronomy journey. Now the last stop of our tour in the month of October is not necessarily an object, but rather a phenomenon, a meteor shower the Orionids. While not as spectacular as the Perseid or the Geminid meteor showers, the Orionids can be relied upon to produce 20 shooting stars an hour under ideal conditions. The shower's peak occurs on October 27th when the moon is new, giving observers good odds this year. If you are one who wants to view the Orionid meteor shower, make sure that you get under the darkest skies possible to increase your chances of seeing them. You do not need to bring any equipment, you don't need to bring binoculars or a telescope, just your naked eye is going to give you the best views. Alright, so that is our tour of the night sky in the month of October. We thank you so much for tuning in this month. If you've been able to view any of these objects through a telescope or maybe even photograph them, let us know in the comments below what equipment you used. We love to hear from you guys. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of these What's in the Night Sky episodes or any of our astrophotography product reviews. Again, I am Tegan. Thank you so much and clear skies.